Hi students. Today we are going to discuss with the principles of organization. Yesterday we have discussed with the organization meaning, its definition and its characteristics. So today we are going to discuss the principles of organization. See my here. Organization is establishment of relationship among various persons and positions in the organization. It also involves the assignment of responsibility and delegation of requisite authority for carrying out the assigned task efficiently and systematically. If the work is not allocated properly, there may arise conflict, confusion and friction among people. So yesterday itself I have explained that actually what is the meaning of organization. Organization is nothing but to reach our objective or goal. Okay, to reach our objective or goal, what we have to do? We have to organize. Nothing but the plan which we have made now, that plan should be organized. Okay, nothing. Uh, here what happens means the work should be allocated. The work should be divided. Uh, the work which is there, that should be divided among the employees as per their positions. Okay. Now, and even the authority and responsibility should also be divided over there. Then only they can finally, they can complete the work. If the work is not allocated or if the work is not organized, then what happens? The person who is working in that organization, he don't know that actually what, what work he has to do, okay, which kind of work he has to do. So that that is a problem arises over there. So that's what, what happens means here. So an organizer, he has to allocate the work, he has to allocate the work, okay, then only the workers, they, then only the workers, what they will do, they will complete the work which is high, assigned by the higher authorities, okay, that is the meaning of an organization. So today we are going to discuss with the principles of organization. So first one is principle of objective, principle of objective, Sima. the enterprise should set up a certain aims for the achievement of which various departments should work, a common goal so devised for the business as a whole and the organization is set up to achieve their goal. In the absence of common aim, various departments will set up their own goals and their, and their possibility of conflicting objectives for different departments. So there must be an objective for the organization. So here principle of objective. So what is the meaning of a principle of objective means nothing but the objective which we have selected. What is our goal? Our goal and objective are the meaning same. So to complete that objective, to complete that objective, we have to set up an organization over there. Okay, nothing but the total organization has to work for that. Okay, nothing but it is a common goal in the organization. That each and every employee or as management who are working over there, their final goal will be that they have to reach their objective. That is the point over here. Next one, principle of specialization. So what is the meaning of principle of specialization? You see, ma, in certain level, in certain departments, specialized persons are required. Okay, so here what happens means as per this uh, qualification in production department, who are required over production manager is required. Nothing but he should have a skills over in the production department. And in marketing field, okay, marketing department who are required, a marketing manager is required. So here mar how they have to sell, how they have to appoint the marketing manager over here. Nothing but the person who has to be specialized in the marketing field. Nothing but he has to complete his MBA in marketing. Next, in case of recruitment, in case of recruitment, who are required? HR manager is required. So here the HR uh, HR manager, nothing but the person who is specialized in HR, human resource, okay, that person should be appointed. So here what happens means to reach our objective, okay, mainly in case of large scale organization, we will be having so many departments over here. So to reach, uh, what happens means in each department, a manager is required. So there the manager, easily they can't appoint the manager uh, as per their uh, as per their requirement so here the persons who are appointing they should be as well qualified in those and nothing but they should have a well skills in those fields only that type of persons they have to appoint over here next principle of coordination so principle of coordination see in an organization we will be having various departments over there so here compulsory each department they have to coordinate if they are coordinating only then finally they will achieve their target that is a point over there next principle of authority and responsibility responsibility. So, principle of authority and responsibility. See, my here, the authority, what happens means it flows from uh, upward to the downwards. It flows from upwards to the downwards. Okay. So, here, what happens means authority, 
first top level top top level people they will show authority on the middle level middle level people they will show authority on the lower level so here what happens means the authority is divided the authority is given so now that authority with that authority even they should have a responsibility also so here what happens means authority can be allocated but responsibility cannot be allocated over here okay that is a point over here there so authority can be delegated or allocated but uh, but the responsibility cannot be delegated if if suppose a manager is there manager he will be having authority his authority he can give his to his subordinates when in his absence he can give his when he in his absence he give he can give his authority to his subordinates but what will be his responsibility his responsibility will the manager responsibility will be that he has to he has to see that the work he has to see that the work which is given that is completed within a time or not that is the responsibility over here so authority can be delegated but re responsibility cannot be delegated over here that is a point next principle of definition principle of definition means sema here actually what type of work we are going to do actually what is our responsibility okay the scope see here the scope of authority and responsibility should be clearly defined every person should know his work with indefinites if the duties are not clearly assigned then it will not be possible to fix responsibility also everybody's responsibility will becomes nobody responsibility so that is a point over here what happens means uh, in an organization clearly they have to mention that this person he has to do this work he this person he has to do this work if they are not correctly mentioned then what happens it uh, they 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 don't know that actually what type uh, what work they have to do that is a point over here and even the, uh, they don't know that actually what is their responsibility so here what happens means the responsibility okay the responsibility and authority they should be clearly mentioned in the organization clearly should be mentioned then only what happens means it will uh, the smooth the running in the organization will be very smooth nothing but the work should be allocated and the work should be correctly assigned to each and every one next span of control so span of control is nothing but see ma time it is nothing so span of control means how many subordinates can be supervised by a supervisor the number of subordinates should be such that the supervisor should be able to control their work effectively moreover the worker work to be supervised should be the same in, of the na same nature the span of control is disappropriate it is bound to affect the efficiency of the workers because of slow communication with the supervisor sima so span of control span of control is nothing but here one supervisor will be there under one supervisor how many workers should be there okay if no, more number of workers are allotted means he can't supervise if if more number of workers are allotted means he can't supervise why because he has to focus on each and every worker whether they whether they are doing correctly or not so here what happens means here what happens means as per the organization as per department under supervisor how many of workers should be there according to that only they should be if less is there it is also affect the problem if more it is there then also it will affect the, so that's why what has to what the uh, here means this span of control is nothing but number of subordinates the number of how many of subordinates can be supervised by a supervisor that is a point over here a supervisor can control how many of the members so as per that only they have to allocate the workers under supervisors and easily he can communicate with them if more number of workers are allotted means what happens ma there be a miscommunication will be there why because he can't focus on all all of the workers over there next principle of balance principle of balance we see here the principle means that assignment of work should be such that every person should be given only that much work which can be performed well if some person is overworked and other is underworked then the work will suffer in both the situations the work should be divided in such a way that everyone every body everybody should be able to give his maximum so here balance the work is the which is the work which is there in the organization that work should be divided as per the um, as per the time okay as per the efficiency they should not be over and they should not be a less if suppose one person is working more hard means we should not give a more work if some person is working less hard means we should not give a less work so here what happens means so the work should be balanced to the in it but work should be balanced nothing but if suppose he is working more also we have to give as per the as per their efficiency as per the balance will balance nothing but the work should be balanced over here 
okay next principle of continuity principle of continuity means nothing but in organization we will be having so many changes over there in the production and in marketing departments why because as for the society they have to prepare the products so here what happened means regularly they have to make the changes in the organizations so that uh, and uh, they have to tackle the market they have to see the market situations over there and then they what they have to do they have to continue nothing but regular continuation should be there in the organization next principle of uniformity see ma the organization should provide for the distribution of work in such a manner that the uniformity is maintained each officer should be in charge of his respective area so has to avoid a dual subordination and conflicts so here what happened means principle uniformity nothing but in an organization in a department mainly in organization we will be having so many departments in a department there should be only one head there should be only a one head in the organization and the work should be divided as per that only so if uh, what happens means if there is only one head the workers who are working under him who are working under him they will listen his words and they will follow only his they only his words only so here what happens means the work will go into a smooth way if suppose there are two or more uh, two or more authorities are there uh, two or more authorities are there for a, for a workers means what happens they, they what happens means they will be in a confusion stage that whose words they have to listen okay who is their correct in charge those all things will be there so that's why what happens means there should be a only one in charge for the workers okay who are maintaining that department okay that is a point over there next principle of unity of command principle of unity of command is sima there should be unity of command in the organization a person should be answerable to one boss only if a, if a person is under a control of more than one person then there is a likelihood of confusion and conflict so same point Not till now, what I have said, unity of command. There should be only a only one boss in the organization. Okay, their command should be only be one one member only. Then what happens? The command person will be only one person, not but a one boss will be there, and the workers they will listen to only that person. If many number of bosses are there, then what happens? The subordinates or else the employee uh, workers who are working under them, they will be having a little bit of confusion, and they don't know that whose boss they have to listen and whose work they have to complete it. That's the point over there. Next principle of exception. Principle of exception is nothing. but here the top management already this point already i have explained over here the top management should not involve in each and everything if there are certain situations major problems if there are any major problems in the organization then only the top management has to involve in that so if for small things if the top management has to not involve the departmental managers itself they can control over here that is a point over principle of exception is nothing but in all in all views in all the problems the top management should not should not involve only in case of major only in case of major situation only the top the top management has to be interfere over there okay that is a point my principle of exception is that is a point over here so these are the 11 principles of organization and it is very important question also so regularly maintain the notes regularly maintain the notes over here clear